Hi guys, it's Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we've got a Schrade folder for you. This is the SCH 306. It's, I believe, a new knife for 2017. Not to be confused with the SCH 306T, which is a, uh, I believe it's discontinued already. A very different knife. It's kind of unfortunate that the naming convention is so close, but hey, I don't make the names, I just review the knives. And this knife is worthy of a review. I think you're going to want to stick around and take a good look at this. Comes in a nice little green box, and there's the code if you need to, if you want to scan it and look it up. And uh, I think you want to check out this knife because I'm liking it. Maybe you'll like it. Stick around. All right, the Schrade SCH306. Look at that piece of work. And this is a piece of work in the positive sense of the word. I know here in North America we like to say something's a piece of work when it's something pretty bad. Not, that's not what I mean. This is a really good piece of kit. Uh, for a budget knife, this thing has a lot of excellent points and a couple little negatives. But that's par for the course, isn't it? Budget knives are never perfect, perfect. They always have something that could be a little bit better. But as long as they've got enough good stuff, they become items that are worth buying and using. And I want to tell you about this guy. Uh, let's start off. 9CR18 MOV steel. Schrade doesn't tell us what the Rockwell hardness is, but 9CR18 is usually done to about 58 or 59 Rockwell hardness. It's one of the higher end of the number CR number MOV, you know, style naming convention. It's one of the better ones in that group. Um, 9CR18 MOV is a decent steel. Uh, Schrade uses a lot of 8CR13, and they do a great job with that. That's used more in their fixed blades when they want stainless steel, but it's also in some of their folding knives. This 9CR18, I like better than the 8CR13. So if that tells you anything, and I really like their 8CR13, so that should tell you a little bit about what I think of this steel. Liner lock knife. It's uh, got a backspacer. I think that material is probably ABS. They don't say. It uh, looks good and it fits in there quite well. We've got aluminum handle scales. Uh, full liners on both sides. Um, clip point blade. Good looking blade actually. Nice belly on there. Decent length of flat area. It's a flipper that also has thumb studs. Um, I know a lot of guys really love flippers. I prefer thumb studs, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, you know, the flipper works as well. And uh, it's not a very, very fast opening knife, and that's because the detent is just a little bit weak, but certainly workable. You can see me using it. And the uh, it's got ball bearings, not washers, which is quite good. I'll... Uh, open it up and take a picture of the insides and I'll show that to you. The uh, lockup is a little bit early. It's not quite as early as I like on a brand new knife, but that's being very nitpicky. It's still plenty early enough to have a lot of life in this knife. And um, you know, it locks up rock solid, no blade play side to side, up and down, none of that kind of issues. The alignment when the knife is closed is just slightly off a little bit to the show side. doesn't rub anywhere. It's not that far off. Let's talk about the specs of everything, the measurements, and we'll move on after that. Talking about the blade first, we've got a cutting edge. So from the end of the sharpness choil there to the tip of the blade, 8.7 centimeters, 3.4 inches. The thickness of the blade is three and a quarter millimeters, which is 0.13 inches. The thickness behind the grind is 0.66 millimeters, which is 0 0.026 inches. Uh, the handle length here is 12 centimeters, which is 4.7 inches. The thickness of the handle is 1.4 centimeters, which is 0.56 inches. In other words, just a little bit thicker than half an inch at the thickest point right along there, just close to the uh, the belly of the handle. The total open length of this knife is 
20.7 centimeters, which is 8.2 inches. The weight of this bad boy, 155 grams, which is 5.5 ounces. 5.5 ounces is just fine in my books. I don't mind carrying this amount of weight all day long. You know, I carry knives that are half a pound all day long, and I don't mind at all. It's not a problem. Uh, for those people who are really picky about the weight, well, this isn't your knife, is it? You can just get something else. But for the rest of us, which I think is probably the majority of people, 5.5 ounces is not a problem. I think it looks really cool. Uh, the aluminum handle scales are done very well. I like that you know, you've got this chamfer going up to the center screw, and then it comes up on the other side. And along the bottom here, they've got another chamfer uh, and Schrade. The name there is uh, raised lettering, so that looks really good. Instead of milled in lettering, which you often see, I like this raised touch. Looks cool. Uh, you've got these um, five different little notches here. Just a little bit of added touch. Tiny bit added grip with that. Not really. It's more a decorative kind of thing. You've got your main finger twirl right there. And then with that flipper arm there as well. This is a very secure knife if you, you know, end up stabbing something and it stops abruptly. Your hand's not likely to go over the blade and get cut because of the flipper arm and your nice, your nice trowel here. It does fit in the palm of the hand quite well. It's not rounded, but it still has a nice enough angle that it sort of emulates being rounded and it fits in the hand quite well. Now let's talk about all the rest of the positives and then I'll mention a couple of the cons. Um, it's got Torx construction, so no proprietary stuff going on. That's a good thing. Uh, pocket clip is a tip-up pocket clip, which that's what the majority of you guys want. And it's very deep carry, which that's the majority of what you guys want too. There's just a tiny bit showing. And let's pull out my pair of jeans so I can demonstrate. You sit in your pair of jeans like this. There's not much to be seen. If you're looking down, of course, you can see the knife in there, but uh, most people are going to be looking you know, side on, maybe slightly down. You can just barely see that it's there. And the pocket clip just hangs there. No problem at all. Really easy to get in and out. Uh, actually, if I say it that way, some people are going to think it falls out of the pocket easily. No, it actually has a decent amount of grip. Uh, you can hear it clicking when it goes over the uh, thickness of the seam there. So, you know, it's that means it's got a decent amount of spring holding down on there. And, uh, you know, it fits in there quite nice. And it's a great little pocket clip. Except for... If you look at it in this orientation, I wish that the pocket clip right here at the end maybe went down just a little bit. If it was no higher than at the beginning of this spot, see where it dips down to touch you know, the, the frame of that, the handle of the knife. I wish the end here was just a little bit lower. It's a little bit over generous as if somebody needs is wearing a really thick pair of pants. If you're wearing jeans with liners in the middle of winter, this is still going to go on really easily. You know, it's it's a little bit more generous than it needs to be. Uh, once this review's over, I'm going to be bending that down just a tiny bit because it gives me just it doesn't. I don't call it a hot spot in the hand, but it's just a little bit annoying with the the tip of that right there in the middle of the palm of my hand. The lanyard hole. Perfectly large enough for 550 paracord. You can probably get 1100 paracord in there. And it's far enough back and it's a really good orientation. It's one of my pet peeves these days. In the last couple of years, knife makers have been doing silly things with the lanyard holds. They've been putting them in odd places, uh, you know, where they're too far down the handle and everything. This is where a lanyard hole should be. If you're going to put a lanyard hole through the handle, this is a uh, Specimen number one in a demonstration of how to do it properly. Schrade, you got it right. Everybody else needs to look at this knife and see that's how you do a hole for a lanyard. There's a little bit of jimping on this knife. Some of the jimping is on this plastic insert right there. And it's just enough to add a tiny bit extra hold when you're doing the odd kind of grips other than your, you know, your standard saber grip. Um, 
you know, the jimping doesn't help there, but on your other grips, and it works with a number of different kinds of grips, uh, that adds just a little bit. And on the thumb riser here, that is some very gentle jimping there. It's just enough that you can sense that it's there. It's not sharp, it's not hot, it's not overly aggressive, and it's not so minimal that it's not worth it. It's just, it's done very well. I like that jimping. I already mentioned earlier, but I think I should mention it again. Lockup is solid. There's no blade play anywhere. And the liner lock here, I'm going to give you a close-up picture in this orientation right now. As you can see in that close-up picture, the lockup is very good. It's not perfect the way I like a brand new knife to be. But this is still very good. It's plenty early enough that you've got lots of wear, lots of life out of this knife. And it's nice and solid. And uh, it's easy enough for me to open and close with my left hand as well. I grew up left-handed, but with three older brothers, I'm actually a little bit better with knives in my right hand than my left. But mostly ambidextrous. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? The sharpness. This blade came nice and sharp from the factory, and uh, the sharp, the cut tests that I'm going to do uh, were recorded before I did the review, and uh, I think I'm going to try doing that for most of my reviews now so that you see what it's like from the factory, the cutting edge, uh, instead of seeing what the cutting edge is like after I've used it for a while. So you guys comment, tell me what you think of that, if you prefer the cut test to be done with the factory edge or if you prefer to see my cut tests after I've used it for a while. I'd like to hear your opinion on that. How about the price? That's another positive thing. The MSRP that Schrade puts on this thing, or the price that you can buy it from their website, is $48.68 US, but at Amazon.com, you know, take off 21 bucks. It's $27.43 US. Talk about a deal. That's good price for a Schrade knife. Unfortunately, it's not currently available on Amazon.ca and I haven't been able to find it from any other Canadian vendors. If you find it from a Canadian vendor, please send me an email at canadiancuttingedge at gmail.com and tell me and I will, let, I will put it in the description below so that I can let the viewers know where they can get it from a Canadian vendor. This one was sent to me by Schrade at I requested if I could have this knife, and uh, they were kind enough to send it to me to review. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, what are the cons on this knife? There are a few. The detent is a little bit weak. Uh, Schrade, I want you guys to check out your knives, and if they're all as weak as this, it's too weak. Uh, you need to get those detents just a little bit stronger. And when I'm saying detent, I mean how much force it takes to get this started opening just in case I'm using the terminology wrong, I should explain to you what I'm trying to say. Um, I'd like it to have a little bit more hold before it releases to start opening. So when you put pressure on the flipping arm, that holds and holds and then flies out. It doesn't need a lot more, just a little bit more detent. There's a couple things that aren't quite even. The handle scale and the liners don't line quite up back here. Um, yeah, that's just a little nitpicky thing. It doesn't line up quite right with the handle scale and the liners right up there where my thumbnail is rubbing. Just a couple spots like that where it's not quite perfect. The other side is very good, but that's a really tiny thing. For the, for the price that you're paying for this knife, that's not an issue. I just wanted to let you guys know in case you're expecting it to be perfect. No, it's, it's just good. Well, not just good. It's good. Um, it's just not perfect. And I don't expect perfect at this price point. We've got a piece of cardboard paper, so this isn't, uh, well not cardboard, this is more like a thick heavy paper, 50 pound paper, something like that. And it just slides through that stuff, no problem. It's got a nice clean edge that it cuts. You know, this is like a cereal box, a box of breakfast cereal that we have out in North America. Cuts through that kind of stuff really well. Put that to the side. How about some printer paper? I've got some nine strand paracord. Let's 
see how well it goes through that. And I'm just going to try to push through and it's not sliding. That cut through very well for just pushing. I like that. Here's my cutting board. Let's see how well it cuts to just slide through. Cuts through that, no problem. So those kind of cuts work just fine. And cut this way. That cuts through just fine as well. It's a good edge all the way along this blade. This is a knife that I'm liking an awful lot. Uh, I'm going to carry it for you know a couple weeks before I do the review and we'll tell you how well this edge holds up over time. Okay, so we're back and I've used this knife for quite a while now and um, it still holds up quite well. I haven't stropped it or anything. I haven't uh, done anything else to it. Um, let's just see how well it cuts uh, on some of that cardboard again or that heavy paper. Look at that edge. It's still cutting it quite well. It may not be exactly as good as it was before, but uh, quite good indeed. I've had this knife uh, through cardboard, through... I've done a little bit of wood whittling. I've done... Uh, you know, I've carried it for EDCing, basically, and whatever kind of tasks came up. Of course, that's mostly package opening, but it's maintained its edge quite well. I can still do the nail neck test all the way across and it catches on the nail everywhere. 9C or 18MOB isn't a bad steel at all. I quite like it. So, that's the video of the Schrade SCH 306. It's a knife that looks good, feels good. It's not perfect, but it, its uh, fit and finish is quite good. Um, its weight is okay. I think this is a buy. If you're looking for a knife like this, if you like this kind of styling, uh, go ahead and use the links below in my description. Uh, if you use my links, I get a little bit of a referral fee, uh, a little bit of a commission, and that helps to fund this channel. So I thank you so much for that. And I want you to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much. Remember, always cut towards your chum and not your thumb.